Why wait to earn the degree you deserve? You have the experience. You have the knowledge. Now is the time to get the credit for the work you've done and earn the recognition you deserve by starting your comeback at Purdue Global. It's time to earn a degree you'll be proud of. A degree that employers will respect. It's never too late. Never too late to come back stronger and move forward in your career. Start your comeback today at purdueglobal.edu. Purdue's online university for working adults. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Episode 68, Front-Loading Your Life with Robert Farrington of The College Investor. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast, where you'll learn to save money, money, embrace simplicity, and live a richer life. Here are your hosts, Jen and Jill. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Frugal Friends Podcast. My name is Jen. My name is Jill. We're back. We are back, and we have another great guest for you today. Mm -hmm. It's all about front-loading your life. And you've probably heard a lot about the financial independence retire early movement, and it sounds very overwhelming, and all of the saving just so you can, for what, to sit on your couch for like 40 years in early retirement? (laughs) No. So we are talking to Robert Farrington And he is giving us a more accessible approach to the same type of concept, but we're referring to it as front-loading your life. And it just seems a lot less restrictive to me. Yeah, it kind of seems like what we're already doing in the frugal lifestyle, but with Mm -hmm. some intentionality to it. So Yes, yes. And we love intentionality. Uh, You know what I also love is the fact that you are back from maternity leave. Oh, this actually isn't my first episode back from maternity leave. It's the second. So excited. (laughs) Never mind. She is back, but she doesn't want to talk about it. (laughs) We'll talk about it in the next episode. We'll be excited the next time we record. Okay, okay. (laughs) Hold up my excitement. Hold on. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get into that interview, but first, our lovely sponsors Mm. and partners, yes. Also brought to you by burning the candle at both ends. While the candle won't last nearly as long with this method, our sponsor wants you to know that you will be sure to have double the amount of light and heat to the traditional methods of candle burning. Furthermore, you will be sure to use up the entire candle with zero wasted wax, Burning the candle at both ends. Try it today for intense and short-lived satisfaction. Wow, that's a good one, Jill. (laughs) That's a good one. Yeah, it's a new look on the burning the candle at both ends. Well, speaking of that, um, we don't want you... (laughs) We don't want you to burn any candles on too many ends. So Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to be talking about sustainable way to position your life to be better later on by doing more work up front, but not so much work that you maybe get sick and get shingles like I did once. That would not be good. No. Yeah. Or lose sleep. That's a story for another time. I think we talked about it, but maybe early... (laughs) Early, early on, maybe like our first episode. Probably. I I can talk more about my shingles later. (laughs) So we've got uh, Robert Farrington from The College Investor. Um, He's been writing The College Investor for over 10 years now, and he has a wealth of information about um, student loan refinancing, student loan forgiveness, paying off student loans, increasing your income, all uh, to benefit you so that you can start investing 
to really reach your dream life earlier. That's his passion. He loves investing. uh, And he realized that not a lot of people could invest because of their student loan burden. Mm -hmm. He is such a nice guy. And we're so, so excited that uh, he joined us for a little interview today. So without further ado, here is our interview with Robert Farrington from The College Investor. Thank you so much for joining us today, Robert. We're so excited to have you. Thank you guys so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Welcome. When I first heard you wanted to be on the show, I was really excited because there's so many things that you could speak to, like on investing and student loans. Like we could spend several episodes with you because you have so much to offer people. But I really love the concept that you've coined about like front loading your life. I think that that is so cool. And so that's really what we want to focus on today. Sounds good. Yeah. I mean, I I talked about front loading your life, I want to say like four years ago now. And with Mm -hmm. everyone talking about fire lately, it's kind of uh, becoming more mainstream, Mm -hmm. but I think it's a great concept. And yeah, we can dive in and really talk about what front loading is and how it can apply in your life for sure. Yeah. I feel like fire is super like it's not very accessible to a lot of people. Like it's very, very extreme, but I feel like front loading is a little more accessible Mm. and easy to grasp. So like, what do you define it as? And like, why is it so awesome? Sure. I mean, the goal of front loading is to stash as much money away as early as you can. And like, I, my challenge would be like 18, 19, 20, like in your early twenties, you know, but if you're not listening to this till later, it's just, you know, as early as you can put as much away because one of the biggest rules of money, and I want to say like Warren Buffett said this, is that compound interest is like the most magical thing that's ever existed um, because it's, a, it's in math. It's math and it's time, right? So the more time you mm-hmm. have, the more time your money has to grow. So if you start mm-hmm. stashing anything in your 20s, like you are such a leg up over in your 30s or your 40s or your 50s. So, you know, that's why I really want to see what we can do to save early. Because I also talk to a lot of people in their mid 30s now, because I'm in my mid 30s, and no one ever thinks back on their 20s and says, Man, I wish I saved less. Like, it's never a thing that anyone yeah. says. I mean, I don't know, maybe you guys have heard it, but like, I have never I wish I had less right. money I right now. I wish I had saved less. No. And, you know, when you're also in your early 20s and 30s, you have like the most ability to do things that you don't think you can. Like you can live on a little less sleep and you can eat, you know, a little bit less stuff and you don't... You can live in a trailer. Yeah. Even if the internet sucks. No, you know what? You could live in a trailer. You could live at home with your parents. Like there's a mm-hmm. lot of ways that you can hack your savings to put more away early. And simply by doing that, you set yourself up for financial success so much faster than somebody else. But you know, there's a lot of barriers to it too. I mean, there's a lot of, you got to know how to do it. There's a lot of psychology involved. It's like, are your friends going to judge you? Is your family going to judge you? Like that's almost harder to deal mm. with than the math, yeah. right? Like, but yes, in your thirties and forties, all of a sudden the roles are going to be reversed. Like you're going to be living much more financially savvier and your friends will be looking at you like, how did he do that? What the heck happened? Like, you know, and they don't ever remember the fact that you refused to go out with them maybe in their 20s. But now here they are 10 years later and they're like, wow, he already has a house and no debt and all this stuff and, you know, things like that. So that's why I'm all very bullish on front loading. Mm. What is the goal of front loading? If you could summarize it like that. Yeah. So if you can save the most before you have kids and houses and large expenses and all these other things in your life that add up. So if you can just put the money away early, then you can just let it grow over time. And as you encounter different seasons of life, everything becomes a lot easier in those seasons because you already have a little nest egg built up from when you were more flexible and able to do it. So for those of us listening who are like, this sounds amazing, more money. <laughs> I want that. What what are some things that we should be doing to front load? Yeah, so you have the biggest expenses in your life. The number one biggest expense for everybody is housing. So how can you save on housing expenses? I'm bullish on living at home. 
you know what? Like if you're 18 to 25, 26, if you are not like making good money, you should be living home with your parents and saving a bunch of money, right? Or living with five, six, seven roommates. I don't care. Like fill it up, like two <laughs> persons per room. But like, you know, you can get your housing expenses down, I, you know, down to $100, $200, $300 per month. You suddenly have a lot of extra income that you can put towards other things, getting out of mm-hmm. debt, saving for retirement, saving for future things that you want to get, like maybe a house or things like that. So housing is the biggest. And that's Mm -hmm. what I think a lot of people also feel the least ability to hack and save on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It sounds like it's not just about though living at home or cutting expenses because I can see all of our older parents listening to this like, what? Uh Uh, I don't want my kids still living with me. But the difference (laughs) in what you're saying is to then do something with that saved money. Money. I think where a lot of times we can get caught in this or a pitfall with that is I, I'm saving on expenses, so I'm just playing video games all day, or I don't have a lot of bills, so I don't have to have a good paying job, or I don't need to be saving. So you're mm-hmm. kind of not just saying cut costs, but you're also saying stack up. Totally. And you're right, because like, sadly, I know the people that have also, you know, at 22, they live at home, but then they're driving like a brand new BMW. <laughs> Mom, <laughs> like, uh, oh gosh, this doesn't yeah. work out. Like, no, don't do that. You should definitely be saving that difference. Um, and then also, you know, your parents might not like it, but you know, you're not going to have this failure to launch potential where, you know, if you save for like three or four years post college and they gave you that benefit and you know, you can still pay rent to your parents and support with groceries and do other things. I'm not saying like you have to be scot free, but versus renting a one bedroom or a studio apartment, mm-hmm. you no, know, you could be saving 50% of the difference right there, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and so you can definitely be adding that to your front load pile, which is like I said, it could be saving for retirement. It could be getting out of student loan debt or any other debt you might have and setting yourself up for financial success. And then there's other things too, you know, so the next big expense for most people is transportation, right? So what does your car situation look like? Are you, you know, buying a new car or leasing a car that you shouldn't be? Or can you go out and get, I don't know, I love the term the Dave car from, you know, the Dave Ramsey community, but like, you know what, go get like a 1998 Honda Civic for yes. 2000 bucks <laughs> and just go mm-hmm. with it. Like, you know, that's cool. Like, I'm sorry, you know, or do you even need a car? Like, could you live in an area, maybe in a more metropolitan area, taking public transportation, biking, walking, mm-hmm. um, you know, potentially ride sharing, depending on your area that could significantly save in your expenses, um, depending on how much and how far you need to go. You kind of need to assess that, but that's another huge potential for savings particularly when we're growing within our society and culture of working more remotely, more remote jobs becoming available. I think we need to also then look at, well, then how necessary is my car now? Some of these other pieces aren't quite catching up. We still think we need a car, but it might not be the case. So even looking at could, do you even look for remote jobs just so you don't have to own a car anymore? I know, right? And like, here's a scary stat that I just saw the other day, and it's from Experian. And they said that the average new car payment in 2019 is $554 oh a month. Oh. Isn't that crazy? And they said the average new car loan is $32,000 with a 68-month term. So over five years that you're paying off these loans at 550 bucks a month. Like that's just ridiculous to me because wow. like you can go buy such, mm-hmm. you know, more frugal things out there and mm-hmm. you're just screwing yourself. Like I'm not here to tell you yes or no. Like at the end of the day, you do you, but at the same time, like, are you going to be happy with your life 10 years from now because you bought a nicer car today? Mm, I don't know. Like, you know, and that's the thing I hear so many times from younger people who are living at home or cutting expenses in other ways. And they're like, yeah, because I'm not paying rent. So I can afford a $600 car payment. It's like, oh no, that's not what you want to be doing. I did the same thing. Yeah. When I was living at home, and it wasn't like a $600 car payment, but it was definitely like I had $50,000 of student loans, but I was still able to justify <laughs> getting a car. I- I did it. So that's the thing is I did this. I thought I deserved myself a new car after college. Mm -hmm. I bought myself a brand new Acura TL and my car payment was $730 a month. Mm -hmm. Right. And like, granted, Mm -hmm. it was like 1.9% and like it was only a three-year loan and I felt like, ooh, I was getting a good deal on it. But like, 
oh, it's just so dumb. Like no one cares. And luckily, I mean, I drove that car for 10 years until I got rid of it. Um, you know, but at the mm. same time, like there was no point in that. That was really just throwing money away for silly reasons. And like you, and it's hard because when you're young and you feel like you deserve it and you have this money and you can afford it, maybe, you know, you feel like you can justify it. But I also mm-hmm. think it's okay to tell yourself and be justified by others that it's okay not to do that too. Well, this is tough because we're we're also talking to a crowd primarily whose prefrontal cortex is not fully developed. So that future thinking and logical reasoning is not even all there yet. So <laughs> it's biology. But it's funny you say that because on the same token we're saying this, we're also seeing this trend of like people on Instagram and like these Instagram influencers that are showing off their fancy things and YouTubers that are driving Ferraris. And yet like people are aspiring to that and they want that. And that's clearly a thing, right? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they don't want to do the work potentially to get there, right? Right. Right. Or how can I have it now? Totally. And that's the, that's the, like you said, it's hard to explain mm. this to people, but, um, cause they just, it's, it, it's just not an easy concept. It's like one of those things that you don't necessarily grasp, you know, naturally, but like I, I broke this down in another article and let's just say you have this goal of having $1 million at age 62, right? So nothing crazy, but if you mm-hmm. started at 22 years old, you would just have to save $3,600 a year, $300 a month starting at age 22, and you could have a million dollars at age 62, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you wait until you're 29 years old, just at the end of your 20s, you know, you're starting, you're like, I'm starting before 30, that amount doubles almost to $6,400 a year. Whoa. Right? And that's the difference that those eight years make in over the 40 years that you're going to invest that money. And that's what it's hard to grasp because like, you know, we, our brains aren't wired to think that way. Um, But that's how the math works. Or to care when you're younger, you know, Mm. you don't think that age is going to happen to you. Right. And it it just, it gets worse if you wait until your thirties. So like, if you want to do the same math, uh, you know, in your thirties here, let's just say you wait until 39. So a decade later, it's $15,300 a year to save a million dollars by age 62. Right. So now you're talking 1200 bucks a month instead of that original $300 a month. And that's not gaining any interest or anything on that. No, that's, that's, in, just that's investing it. That is like investing. Nice solid, more. like, you know, eight, nine percent return on your money uh-huh. over that same period of time. Wow. Yeah. And that's why it's start so young. We know New Year's resolutions often don't stick. In fact, on average, they last around 30 days. So if saving money is on your 2024 resolution list, here's a foolproof way to stick to yours. Switch your phone provider to Mint Mobile. For a limited time, wireless plans from Mint Mobile are $15 a month when you purchase a three-month plan. That's unlimited talk, text, and data for $15 a month. For those of you paying close to 40 bucks a month for just one phone line, This means a savings of $300 over the course of the year. We especially like Mint because all plans come with unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. To get this new customer offer and your new three-month unlimited wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash frugal. That's mintmobile.com slash frugal. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash frugal. Additional taxes, fees, and restrictions apply. See Mint Mobile for details. AI might be the most important new computer technology ever. It's storming every industry, and literally billions of dollars are being invested. So buckle up. The problem is that AI needs a lot of speed and processing power. So how do you compete without costs spiraling out of control? It's time to upgrade to the next generation of the cloud, Oracle Cloud Infrastructure, or OCI. OCI is a single platform for your infrastructure, database, application development, and AI needs. OCI has four to eight times the bandwidth of other clouds, offers one consistent price instead of variable regional pricing. And of course, nobody does data better than Oracle. So now you can train your AI models at twice the speed and less than half the cost of other clouds. If you want to do more and spend less, like Uber, 8x8, and Databricks Mosaic, Take a free test drive of OCI at oracle.com slash strategic. That's oracle.com slash strategic. oracle.com slash strategic. 
How do you find the balance between working hard now and living in this season that you'll never get back? Yeah, and that's a hard one. And, you know, there's no right or wrong answer for anyone. I think it comes back to, to striking that balance. Like you do have to always take care of yourself and your priorities first, which I think for most people is, you know, take care of yourself, take care of your family, kids, mm-hmm. all that, and then see how you can take care of both of those things for the future. Mm-hmm. So I think we also lose sight of like, why, why are we even bothering talking about saving money? Like who cares, right? And the real goal is, well, I'm trying to take care of myself and my family a decade from now. And I want to be in a better place than I am today. So that's where I think it's changing that mindset of why you're saving. What's the purpose of saving? And then I also think it's about finding the balance. So, you know, we talk a lot about, you know, saving money, which is important, but you know, there's also the earning money as well. So if you have a choice of how you're going to spend an hour of free time you have, because, you know, let's say we have young kids. I know you have a young kid. Like, yes, you know, brand new. Uh, finding an hour is challenging. <laughs> and finding that hour mm. could also be at like 9 p.m. at night because the kid went to bed and you finally have a little bit of time. And that's the only time where your brain's functioning well, because when you have a newborn, that all doesn't work all the time. Like <laughs> challenging. <laughs> like, I've been yes. There. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it all doesn't work all the time. Ooh, right. like so, so real. <laughs> so yeah. it's really deciding on how to get the most bang for your buck. So, you know, spending an hour, you know, you could potentially save, you could, you know, cut some costs, you could coupon, you could try to find a deal, you could do that kind of thing. Or maybe it's about earning money. You know, maybe you have some time that you could uh, go out and side hustle, resell something you have online. Uh, maybe you got, you know, some baby stuff you no longer use because your, your son's grown up a little bit. You can resell some of that stuff. So like, it's not just about, you know, trying to save, but it's also about just figuring out the best use of that short bit of time you have. And that changes with every season. Like when you don't have kids, like you have a lot more time. You can go out and side hustle and earn more money, work more, work overtime. When you have kids, you have to think more critically about how you're going to spend your time and, you know, where maybe that's going to be a more of a saving season of life, more of a cutting cost season of life, things like that. Yeah. I think that's so important to note is that one doesn't trump the other in every season of life. You have to figure out what's right for you in what season. So sometimes making money is more accessible and other times you have to think more about saving. I think that's so important. Saving and family, right? Like you're never going to get back those years with your children. But at the same time, like, you know, when you're single and you don't have anything, it's like, do I watch Netflix or go out to the bar on Friday night? Or should I go drive ride share and make a couple hundred bucks tonight? Like, you know, when you have a kid, that's no, neither of those are options. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Netflix so isn't true. even an option at that point. Right? <laughs> so like uh, changes with the season. <laughs> Yeah. And being able to recognize what season you're in. My goodness. Like what kind of idiot would walk outside and not know what season it is. So being able to even see what season you are currently in Mm -hmm. and plan accordingly and know that that season isn't going to be for forever. So if you do have opportunity to side hustle, like you mentioned, Robert, you have that energy to do it when you're young. You're not most likely going to be doing as many side hustles when you're 65. Totally. And that comes back to that whole front loading thing, right? It's yes. you have this ability when you're younger that, you know, you just have less of the ability when you're younger. Of course, there's always going to be some exceptions to the rule, but mm-hmm. like, you know, it is just frankly a lot easier to front load and side hustle and earn more and save more in your 20s and early 30s than it is later in your life. Mm-hmm. What would you say, Robert, to the person who's on a tight income and yet doesn't have a lot of time, what would be the most important thing for them to prioritize? Well, number one is organization. Mm -hmm. You can't even have a conversation if you're not organized with your money. So what's your spending? What's your expenses? And the reason I even bring this up is because when I have this conversation with people, I would say 90% of people couldn't tell you how much they're able to save each month. They couldn't tell you what their income and expenses are each month. And it's frankly shocking. If they're trying to get out of debt specifically, I see this a lot when I talk to people with student loans, they don't even know what their loan balances are. They don't know what their monthly payments on their loans are. And they don't know like when they'd be done paying off their loans. So you can't even start that conversation of, you know, where to go until you get organized. So I'd say if you're struggling spend that first hour of free time you have because you're busy and you're doing stuff to just lay it all out there. Whatever that looks like for you, 
So maybe you spend the first hour researching different ways to lay it out there and then the next day do it, right? Like whether that's a spreadsheet yeah. or using a tool like Mint or Quicken or Personal Capital or, you know, some people like planners still with like, you know, real paper. Like, you know, <laughs> that's cool. Like whatever mm-hmm. works for you, do it. And then once you know where you stand, you can make rational decisions of what am I going to do with my next free hour? Is my next free hour going to be about maybe looking for a cheaper apartment? Or is my next free hour going to be like how, what like type of side hustle might make sense for me? Mm -hmm. You know, it really depends on where you're at in your season of life and what your budget looks like, but you can't even think about that until you're organized. Such a good point that, and I didn't even realize that there'd be that number of people who wouldn't even know what their expenses look like, what their income looks like. We take it for granted, Jill, because we're nerds. I know. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's one of those things is like, as long as my bank account's not overdrafting and I'm not getting an alert, like things must be working out. My direct deposit must have come in and my expenses must have all worked out and I'm good for another month. But there's no clear picture of like what I could save, what I could earn, what that looks like. Yeah. Yeah. And to think about it in like what you said, once you have that grasp, then you can think about like what your next hour is going to be like, am I going to look for a side hustle or or taking these like small chunks, like doing it in small steps instead of just thinking about the big picture and getting overwhelmed by it, mm-hmm. which I, I think is something else this front loading allows you to do is to have it in a smaller time frame. Totally. And I know the podcast listeners here that they're they're a little different, right? They're they're enjoying this journey that they're on and trying to improve their personal finances. But for a lot of people, it's kind of like I have no inspiration and I don't want to deal with it. And then something happens. There's an event or they read something or they hear something or a friend talks about it and they get like a burst of inspiration. And mm-hmm. they have you, you have like a I always joke, we have like a window as like personal finance influencers of that short time to get them to do the next step. Mm -hmm. But if that first step of inspiration fails, like they're not going to take any action again until they hit that next burst. Mm -hmm. Right. And so like, if you can break it down into small chunks and do things manageably, and then they see a small win and then that gives them a little more motivation to get to the next small win. Because the hard part with money is that none of it's overnight. (laughs) All of this is like years long processes, whether you're saving, investing, paying off debt, whatever, yeah. Like there's no magic wand that tomorrow it's going to all be different. <laughs> yeah, sure. So <laughs> right? true. Yeah. With this, this isn't on our list of questions. So if we're throwing you a curveball, we can no, edit it. <laughs> but Ooh. with with that, where do you see room for enjoyment? Because at the same time, where we say now is the time that you have the energy to do the side hustle, save, go hard at at your finances. The same is true about now's the time that you have to enjoy, to be able to get away, travel, hike, be active. How how could somebody, I know we touched on this a little bit, but where is there room to say, I'm going to stash away money, but I'm also going to be able to give myself permission to go on vacation? Yeah, like it doesn't have to be mutually exclusive, but it mm-hmm. does need to be thought about how you're going to do it. So what do you get enjoyment in and like how can you hack those? I don't know. Personally, I'm a b- big fan of side hustles because I get enjoyment in entrepreneurship and earning mm-hmm. money. And like I used to love to go to garage sales and estate sales buy mm-hmm. things and resell things. Because one, I, I like, I don't know, I like, I like antiques and I'm like an old soul and I sure. like going and seeing that kind of stuff. And then I like reselling it. So I found enjoyment in that. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, like there's a lot of free things to do that we dismiss and take for granted. So mm-hmm. go out, go to the library, go, you know, if you like movies, you don't need to pay for a movie. You can go to the library and rent pretty much any DVD that's like out right? Yeah. Like if you it's like, like a, an old blockbuster, it is. You know, <laughs> you go to, um, you know, outdoor activities are all free, but even travel, you know, there's a lot of ways to hack your travel now. Like, you know, depending on what you do and how you spend, it's like find a rewards card. You know, you can use those miles and points to potentially hack your travel so that it's free. And is it fast and easy and quick? No, it might take you a couple of years to get there. But you know, if that's where you're also at in your season of life, you probably shouldn't be taking big trips more than every once or t- every other year, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, it all it all lines up to where you are. And I think it's just thinking critically about it and being organized and mindful about how you divert your time, money. Right. Good word, yes. Robert. <laughs> On that note. 
I don't know what could top it, but I've got an idea. It's another uh-huh. good word that we like to use. It's the, the bill, bill of the, of the week. week. That's right. It's time for the best minute of your entire week. Maybe a baby was born and his name is William. Maybe you paid off your mortgage. Maybe your car died and you're happy to not have to pay that bill anymore. Duck bills, Buffalo bills, Bill Clinton. This is the Bill of the Week. Robert, every week we ask somebody to submit their favorite bill and we select the person who is next in line to play theirs. And when we have guests, we invite them. They get to skip the line. So Mm. what is your bill for us? So, you know, one of my pet peeves slash like most interesting to hack bills is my electric bill. So Mm. in San Diego here, we get our gas and electric is one bill. And for the last like couple years, it's like, how low can we get our electric bill? And you might think that's crazy, but like doing a lot of little things in our house have made a big difference. So like we switched every light bulb in our house from, you know, these old lights to LED light bulbs. And that was like an investment. I mean, it was like 200 bucks. So I don't know if you guys know those bulbs are like eight, nine bucks a light bulb. It's mm-hmm. kind of crazy, but mm-hmm. it reduced our electric bill. No joke by $50 a month. Wow. Well, right. And so now, like, here we go. Like, everyone's like, well, are you going to get solar and do all this stuff? Like, solar makes no point for us. So, our average gas and electric bill combined is $50 a month. 30 of those dollars are like all the mandatory fees and taxes and like distribution charges that like you can't do anything about. So our actual like electric bill is down to about 10 bucks a month for the usage portion. And, uh, you know, we've been keeping it pretty steady around there. Um, And it's just by being very mindful about what you use. And I don't even think I'm going to get below that because like, you know, the internet's always on, right? Like you got these things that are plugged in, like we just aren't going to be turning off anytime soon. The refrigerator is going, but like just being very mindful about what you can control and what you can't control and understanding how you're built. Because now when I challenge my friends and neighbors on this, a lot of people are getting solar. I'm like, you know, if you do these simple things and invest maybe $200, $300 in like some energy saving things, there's no way that any kind of solar panel you buy for any size house makes sense today. As much as we want to say that solar Mm. is a good thing, the cost of it is 15 to 20 years on your ROI, assuming that everything's staying the same. And I don't think it's going to. So, you know, do you really want to spend 15,000 bucks on a 15 year project or you want to spend $200 today and enjoy the same reward that you would get? Preach. That was an educational bill. (laughs) Knowing how you get bills. Yes. Yes. So profound and also sounds like a hashtag. Sure. And then, you know, I I have to say, so I'm in Southern California. Let's like put the asterisks there because I know every state is different. I want to say like Mr. Money Mustache shared his power bill the other day and it was like the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. He was in Colorado. So like your utility may be different. (laughs) Sure. (laughs) Yeah. Know how you hashtag get billed. For sure. But I, it does make me want to replace the rest of our bulbs with LEDs. Like I think we're at like half and half right now, and it's summer, so our our energy bill is extremely high mm-hmm. right now. So sure. I might. I mean, it seems worth it. it- it was it was surprising how much it was. And we had, you know, all this recessed lighting in our kitchen and stuff. And so like, you know, the kitchen's probably the room where we leave the lights on the most because you're in there. And so like just by switching them out, like it was surprising how much of a difference it made. Yeah. Good bill. Good if one. You want to submit your bill of the week or maybe teach us a lesson about what we can do to get our bills lowered. Uh, visit frugalfriendspodcast.com slash bill. And uh, you can leave us a message on our SpeakPipe or Google Voicemail. Your pick. Perfect. It's never too late. Never too late to earn a degree. Never too late for a comeback. Between your busy career and taking care of a family, it can feel like there's never a good time to go back to school. But your time is now. Time to start your comeback with Purdue Global. As Purdue's online university for working adults, Purdue Global is dedicated to supporting adults like you who know it's time to earn the recognition you deserve. You have the experience. You have the knowledge. It's time to get credit for the work you've done. 
you can balance work, family, and everything in between while earning your degree. It's time to move forward in your career, for your family and for yourself, with a degree you're proud of, a degree that employers will recognize and respect. You're worth this investment in yourself to earn a degree you deserve. It's never too late. Never too late to go back to school and come back stronger with an education you can trust. Now is the time for your comeback. Start yours today at purdueglobal.edu. We all agree that reducing carbon emissions is a good thing. And once again, Toyota is leading the way. We hear a lot about fully electric vehicles, and Toyota has them with more on the way. But we also know a BEV is not for everyone, whether it's because of cost, range, or concern about finding a charging station when your battery gets low. Ah! You start freaking out. Plus, the raw materials used to manufacture batteries are limited. Enter Beyond Zero, Toyota's vision for a carbon-neutral future in vehicles and in manufacturing plants, too. In the years ahead, the materials used to make just one long-range battery for an EV could be used to make batteries for six plug-in hybrids or 90 gas-electric hybrids. That's why Toyota's position today is electrified, diversified, empowering you to choose how to reduce your own carbon footprint with the vehicle that's right for you, a hybrid, plug-in hybrid, or a battery EV. So shop, learn more, and get details at toyota.com slash beyond zero. Toyota, let's go places. And now it's time for the lightning round. round. I said that I was going to start doing it in that voice when I came back from maternity leave. Oh, I love the goals <laughs> that you've set for yourself upon return. I'm like slowly getting into it. It's a lot for me. <laughs> so many hormones. I know. So you talk a lot about passive income on the college investor. And I think that that is a perfect example of front loading your life. It's actually, I was reading one of your articles about passive income and that's where I saw it on your website. So today's lightning round is all about passive income and it's just real quick and we could do, I mean, we will do an entire episode about the passive income one day, but not today. (laughs) Not today because it's the lightning round. Because it's the lightning round. All right. So Robert, What is passive income? It is income that you get to make and enjoy for doing nothing in the future. Not to say you don't have to do anything up front, but you enjoy the fruits of your labor all the way out. Yes. So it's It's all the work up front. It's the equivalent of hoeing the land, planting the seed, watering it, and then letting the rain do the rest. You got it. Exactly. Mm. Oh, yeah. (laughs) I've spent some time gardening. You got it, it, Jill. (laughs) rototiller. Robert, (laughs) what are your favorite ways of making some passive income? So the easiest way is a bank account, right? So you can get like two and a half percent on your savings account right now for nothing. You just literally Mm -hmm. go to your bank, put some money in it. Boom. You get two and a half percent, right? That is like the idealist form of passive income. And then you can do things like investing. I like investing in the stock market for the long term. You average like eight, nine percent per year all the way into the future. And then, you know, you have things like real estate, which are like, I don't know, I call them semi-passive because you don't really get to like totally be hands off. You could, there's different ways to structure it. But, uh, you know, you get, you buy the house, you spend the money, you might spend some time, right? Mm -hmm. But then you get your rent check every month. Great way to get passive income. Yes. My favorite is the book that I wrote a few years ago. Mm. I published it in 2017 and I did all the work then. And now I just watch for the deposits from Amazon every month. Love it. And that is so nice. That's why I'm publishing another one. (laughs) Robert, any pitfalls that we should look out to avoid? With passive income, the Mm -hmm. big thing is, is there's no such thing as like get rich quick kind of things. There's no overnight successes here. So when we're talking about it, like risk and reward is always perfectly correlated, right? So 2.5% is what you get safely. You put your money in a bank account, it's insured, all safe. The more you earn above and beyond that, the higher the risk is that you could potentially lose your money. So Going back to my rental, you could theoretically have tenants that like trash your property or your house burns down. Like that risk really does happen. It's very rare, 
but like, you know, you could lose money. And that's what you always have to remember when it comes to these things. And that's why the goal is, you know, you invest for the long term, because ideally over 30, 40 years, you know, all these little risks and road bumps you have over time will even themselves out. Mm. And it sounds like even diversity in that, that it's not only within having tenants, but tons of other opportunities for some passive income yeah, totally. and active income. Yep, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Robert, what do you have going on over at College Investor and where can people go if they want to hear more from you since there's so much more that they can hear from you? Totally. So you can come to thecollegeinvestor.com and we talk a lot about student loan debt, investing, passive income, side hustles, talking a lot about paying for college right now because it's that time of the year. And uh, you can listen to us on the College Investor audio show as well if you are not a reader and you prefer to listen. Mm, which, if you're listening to this, is probably you. Yeah. So that's yeah. a perfect transition. You got stuff for tactile learners, auditory, yes. visual. That's the goal. That is the goal. <laughs> yes. So if you want to learn more about paying off your student loans, making passive income so that you can invest and front load your life, definitely check out thecollegeinvestor.com or the audio show. And thanks so much for coming on, Robert. This has been great. Thanks for having me, guys. It's been fun. Well, that was great. I'm so glad we did that. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, me too. One of our better yeah. decisions, really. Of all the things I, we've done yeah. together, glad we did that yeah, one. For sure. I think Robert is so great. I have so much respect for him. So I'm honored that we could have him on and talk about something as cool as front loading your life. And because I think and you don't hear that phrase a lot. And so I think that we should use it because fire and financial independence, retire early, it's it's overused at this mm -hmm. point. And it's just a better term that can redeem how laundry might feel for people. Like when I think of front loading, I think of like a front loading washing machine. So this is a better association. Yeah. Don't, don't think of your laundry. Think of the financial opportunities you have in your life. Yep. Done. Done. Figured that one out. Yep. And since we're talking about investing... This month's book for book club is The Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins. This is a book that taught me how to set up my investments. It taught me almost everything I know about investing is the foundation for everything. So I think it's a really great time to read it, mm. uh, whether you are at the beginning of your journey or whenever you're ready to start investing the Simple Path to Wealth by J.L. Collins is is a killer, killer read. Mm. I'm excited about that one. I'm gonna yes. I'm, I'm gonna do that. And if you want a free copy of this book, you have an opportunity to get one hmm. by here's what you gotta do. You gotta leave us a review on iTunes or Stitcher, then screenshot that review and email it on over to us at frugalfriendspodcast at gmail.com. And for every five reviews we get emailed to us, we select one winner out of that. So your chances are pretty good. And we select that at the end of the month. And then we send it to you. And it may or may not be a used copy, but all the content will be there. It is 100% a used copy. <laughs> I know because I buy them. <laughs> so... <laughs> And everybody else should know at this point, too, if you've been listening. Mm -hmm. And so The Simple Path to Wealth is available in most libraries, but since it's a self-published book, it may not be available in everyone. So this is definitely the month you want to email us a review, just like Angel0610, who sent us this five-star review. You can do it just like this one. She says, love this podcast. I'm so glad I found this podcast. Jen and Jill provide awesome and practical tips you can actually use. Thank you for sharing. Nice. Yes. Yes. Reviews Thank like you that. so much, Angel. So helpful. Yeah. So uplifting. So encouraging. <laughs> <That's> yeah. <laughs> or you can do like the next one that says frivolous stupidity. Oh. And it's one star oh, review. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. You could, so either one of you those. You could do that. Um, equally right, uplifting. Just email it to us to enter uh-huh. for a chance to win uh-huh. the book. Either one. Either one. You know, so we can know who so. you are and know exa- the exact address to show up to uh-huh. with your book. <laughs> yes, right. Exactly. So <laughs> that's it. And that's all. Thank you again for listening to the Frugal Friends podcast. See you next week. Woo. Frugal Friends is produced, edited, and mixed by Eric Siriano. Frivolous stupidity. I hadn't seen that one. Oh my gosh. Yes. They use the word vapid. Oh, whoa. Good for them. Yeah. And they say that we're a four-star podcast, but we're not. We're 4.5 stars. So, sorry. In their review, they say that we're a four-star, but they give us one star? Yeah. Mm. I don't know. They love their words. So... They do have a, and they have a lot of them. Mm-hmm. Again, they use the term valley girl, which I'm fine with because I can't change the way my voice sounds. Yeah, I can't change the way my voice sounds either. Yeah. But, so. anyways, back to my shingles. Mm. <laughs> I, if you don't know the story, my husband and I paid off our debt two years, three years ago at this point. But at the very beginning, I tried to side hustle my way out of debt and not change my spending at all because I thought I could do that. Mm -hmm. And two months into doing all these side hustles, I I contracted shingles from how stressed I was. That's, um, yeah, I know. That's real. (laughs) No, yeah, yeah. That's a real story. Um, Yeah. Yep. And... Uh, that, that's, um, that's a very overwhelming response to have very clearly acute stress. Like I can't say that I know many people who have experienced stress induced shingles, particularly in their twenties. Yeah. So it is something to be aware of with these side hustles and front loading and fire goals that we do have capacity. Right. I know. And, uh, I mean, even in my healthiest state, some would refer to me as a workaholic. So (laughs) that was a very unhealthy state for me. And I, it made me kind of give up the pursuit of quote unquote fire, like Mm. specifically, we're still investing and and doing all that, but I just can't go as hard as all of these other people. I just, I will get too wrapped up into it. And I get shingles again. Yeah. That's my I, I don't want you to get shingles again. So no, especially now I have a baby and the baby doesn't care when I'm in pain. <laughs> nope. Only when he he's hungry for that care. free food. Oof. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. You said a zinger before we start recording is that Kai is just like his dad. He'll do anything for free food. <laughs> and he does. What a great he use does. of the word zinger. Yeah. (laughs) On that note. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye. A group of high school students started a project to research a string of unsolved murders. There is no profile of this killer except for the ones the students created. What if this guy's still alive? Like, what if he comes after us? Once you start getting a few tips or a few leads or a few identifications, then the cold case isn't so cold anymore. This is Murder 101. Listen to Murder 101 on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Discover the heartwarming and hilarious world of sibling connections on Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson. Dive into family tales, explore the human mind, and laugh with guests like Joel and Benji Madden. It's more than a podcast. It's a celebration of the ties that bind us. And it's fun because we've decided to open it up to really like all kinds of different siblings. And it's going to be... Uh, an awesome season. Listen to Sibling Revelry with Kate Hudson and Oliver Hudson on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.